I swear to God, I tried to avoid talking about the Kanye West presidential run story because I don't think that he's serious. I think this is a publicity stunt and I don't want to inadvertently feed into that, right? I think he's doing this to promote his new EP or album or whatever he's doing. Uh, but I don't think he's serious. He hasn't given us any indication that he's serious about this. He hasn't filed any paperwork. And on top of that, he's missed the deadline in a number of states. You can't run in New York. You can't make it on the ballot in Illinois. And if you want to qualify to be on the ballot in California, then he has less than 30 days to get 200,000 signatures. And if you don't have a political campaign or apparatus of any kind, you're not going to make that happen. I don't care how famous you are. So I don't think he's serious. However... He's now veering into the realm of politics, and even if he doesn't run for president, he could still have a negative impact on the broader political discourse based on what he's saying. So let's start from the beginning. On July 4th, he announced he'd be running for president, tweeting, We must now realize the promise of America by trusting God. No thank you. Unifying our vision and building our future. I am running for president of the United States. Hashtag 2020 vision. Now, immediately after he put out this tweet, billionaire Elon Musk responded saying, You have my full support. Because, of course, that's what Elon Musk would tweet out. Now, my question to Kanye is, why would you run for president if you don't care about politics and you don't know anything about politics? Like, do you even know the difference between Democrats and Republicans? Like, do you know how many branches of government there are? And I'm not saying that to be condescending. I'm saying Kanye West, like based on what we have learned from him in a new Forbes interview, he is deeply naive and his views range from social progressivism when it comes to issues like criminal justice but outright theocratic totalitarianism when it comes to issues like prayer in school and it's scary so if you don't know about politics why are you getting involved so i mean the reason why i'm talking about this in spite of my reluctance is because even if he doesn't run for president it seems like he won't be able to run in 2020 if you are talking about things like this, which we're about to see, where you're spreading misinformation and conspiracy theories that are deeply dangerous at a time when there's this anti-science, anti-mask fervor in America, we have to call you out. We have to. So there's a couple of things that the article um, or the interview points out here. And the first thing that is clear is that he doesn't really have any allegiance to one political party. You know, he says that he would run as a Republican if Trump weren't in office. But, you know, since Trump is in office, he doesn't want to be a Republican. So he's choosing to run under the banner of the birthday party, literally, because if he's elected, then every day will be like a birthday for Americans. <laughs> okay. Now, additionally, he claims that he's no longer a supporter of Donald Trump, but he still very clearly has an affinity for Donald Trump, and he also has already preemptively selected Elon Musk as his running mate. Because why wouldn't he? Of course. And he wants to make Elon Musk the head of America's space program. I don't think he'd be interested in that because he's interested in profit. But nonetheless, the first thing that I want to get to is whether or not he can run at all, because he still thinks that he can run for president in 2020, because according to Forbes, he believes an argument could be made to get onto any ballots he's missed citing coronavirus issues. I'm speaking with experts. I'm going to speak with Jared Kushner, the White House with Biden, says West. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Why would Donald Trump and Joe Biden help you get on the ballot if you're running against them? That makes no sense. Why would they help you? I mean, ask the Green Party or the Libertarian Party how welcoming Democrats and Republicans are to third party candidates. Why would you think they're going to help you? Because you're Kanye West? I mean, the level of entitlement here and delusion, it's just, it's, it's stunning to me. It really is. Now, some other things here that he uh, points out. He never voted in his life, which, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, you could blame that as a failure on our institutions and politicians. Uh, but he also says that he had COVID-19 in February. This is kind of a side point. And he says that if he were to ever be in control of the White House, he would structure it the way that the government of Wakanda is structured. For those of you who don't know, Wakanda is a fictional government in a fictional movie about superheroes with superpowers. But that's what he'd model his White House after. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is gonna be a long video, so buckle up. So let's get to the policies, because this is where things take a turn for the downright 
terrifying and totalitarian, quite frankly. When asked what his plan to deal with COVID-19 is, well, simply put, it's prayer. We pray. We pray for the freedom. It's all about God. We need to stop doing things that make God mad. Your response to a pandemic is prayer? Using that logic then, which is stupid logic, why would you run for president? Because can't you just use your influence now to pray away COVID-19? Why do you have to be president to encourage prayer? Aren't people already doing that? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Believe it or not, it gets worse because on the subject of vaccines, he says it's so many of our children that are being vaccinated and paralyzed. So when they say the way we're going to fix COVID is with a vaccine, I'm extremely cautious. That's the mark of the beast. They want to put chips inside of us. They want to do all kinds of things to make it where we can't cross the gates of heaven. I'm sorry when I say they, the humans that have the devil inside them. And the sad thing is that the saddest thing is that we all won't make it into heaven, that there'll be some of us that do not make it. Next question. Let's just pause for a moment and try to take all of that in. So we're dealing with a pandemic. Maybe the one thing that will save us since we're not accepting social distancing or the economy to be shut down for a prolonged period of time, since we're refusing to wear masks. I mean, the one thing that could save us a vaccine He's saying, no, I don't like that because it's the mark of the beast. Yeah, no, no, not okay. Um, there's enough people in America who are anti-science, flat earthers, anti-vaxxers, and conspiratorial. We don't need more of that in American politics. We need less of it. We need more people who are not delusional, who are pro-science. But he just thinks that, you know, the answer to everything is prayer. And people who are promoting vaccines... They have the devil and they're not going to make it to heaven. If you're president, you shouldn't be worrying about people's eternal salvation. You should be focusing on policy. But it gets worse. <laughs> when it comes to foreign policy, he hasn't developed one yet. Quote, I haven't developed it yet. I'm focused on protecting America first with our great military. Let's focus on ourselves first. On the issue of abortion, I am pro-life because I'm following the word of the Bible. Okay, if your response to foreign policy is, I don't know, don't run for president. And hopefully he'll take that pro-life position that he has with regard to abortion and apply it to foreign policy. That's a good starting place. But I mean, the things that are going on in the world are so complex that we can't have someone again, like Donald Trump, start at having zero knowledge. Like we need someone to come in with knowledge about the complex situations going on in the world, the Israel-Palestine situation, Morocco's occupation of the Western Sahara, the conflict between India and China. I mean, there's so much going on that we can't afford to have another dipshit be in power. Um, but he goes on, he's asked about prayer in schools, and he is he's for it. He says, reinstate in God's state, in God's country, the fear and love of God in all schools and organizations, and you chill the fear and love of everything else. So that was a plan by the devil to have our kids committing suicide at an all-time high by removing God, to have murders in Chicago at an all-time high because the human beings working for the devil removed God and prayer from the schools. That means more drugs, more murders, more suicide. On tax policy, I haven't done enough research on that yet. I will research that with the strongest experts that serve God and come back with the best solution. And that will be my answer for everything that I haven't researched. I have the earplug in and I'm going to use that earplug. Okay, I don't know what that means, but if you are explicitly looking for people who will serve God, you're going to find the evangelicals and they're most likely going to encourage you to come up with a tax plan that will lead to you getting a cut in your taxes. And on top of that, to say that... um. The reason why there's all of these children committing suicide and, you know, all of this murder is because God has been taken out of the schools. This is exactly what evangelicals say. They would, like, go for this. They would love this. They'd be enthusiastic about this platform. Like, this is theocracy. He wants to make America like the Christian equivalent of Saudi Arabia. 
And um, this is this is just disgusting. Now, when it comes to George Floyd, he does seem to initially offer prayer as the main solution in lieu of criminal justice reform, but he does eventually land on amending the Constitution, saying, well, God has already started the healing slash this conversation alone is healing and revealing slash we all need to start praying and kneeling. Another bar after that. But when a rhyme comes together, I'm going to complete it, not inside the lines created by organizations that we know as our reality. The schools, the infrastructure was made for us to not truly be all we can be, but to be just good enough to work for the corporations that designed the school systems. Uh, that's not... Oh, never mind. We're tearing that up. What we'll do is we're not going to tear up the Constitution. What we will do is amend. So unless we're talking about charter schools... Corporations did not design the school systems. Um, I, I don't know what he's trying to get at here. Um, but what he's saying doesn't really make any sense. And he's kind of just rambling and he doesn't seem he doesn't seem well. Um, on top of that, when it comes to other policy priorities, he does say that he's against the death penalty because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. So there's that. Um, and when it comes to other priorities, he wants to, quote, clean up the chemicals in our deodorant and our toothpaste. There are chemicals that affect our ability to be of service to God. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it means more regulations. Um, but you know, if you're appealing to Republicans with this evangelical rhetoric, then they're going to be a little bit peeved if you're proposing more regulation. So He's kind of all over the place ideologically because he has no, like, coherent political ideology. It's just, it's randomness. It's it's bizarre. It's weird. Um, now, he isn't 100% sure that he's still going to run in 2020. He wants to run. He's saying he's going to run, but it's possible that maybe he waits until 2024. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be up to states and whether or not, you know, he makes their deadline. It's going to be up to God because he says let's see if the appointing is at 2020 or if it's 2024 because God appoints the president if I win in 2020 then it was God's appointment if I win in 2024 then that was God's appointment so in his mind he's so narcissistic that he believes that it's already a foregone conclusion God is going to appoint him to the office of the presidency it's just a matter of when maybe it won't be in 2024 uh, maybe it won't be in 2020, but if not, then maybe it'll be in 2024. It's just a matter of when God says, hey, Kanye, get in the White House. It's your time, bud. Um, yeah, so this is the guy that Elon Musk, <laughs> the science guy, decided to endorse immediately after he announced that he'd be running for president. Uh, but when someone shared an article with him detailing how Kanye is a huge anti-vaxxer and anti-abortion, Elon responded saying, we may have more differences of opinion than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> you think? It's almost like politics isn't a game and people's lives are at stake. So, I mean, I, I read this, I see the policies that Kanye West is putting out there, and this is something that actually would be uh, persuasive to a large contingent of the population, because, I mean, think about this. After Donald Trump, a reality television star, became president, do you honestly think that this wouldn't appeal to someone in America? Especially the conspiracy theories? So, I mean, it's dangerous. Even if it's laughably incoherent, it still is going to appeal to a certain crowd, right? Conspiracy people, evangelicals. There is, I think, a demand for this type of weird politics, Right. And maybe there'll be a cult of personality like Donald Trump that forms around him. So if he chooses to run for president and is serious, could he actually have a shot? I mean, it's possible. I'm not going to say yes, but it is possible. But I will say that, like, even though it's funny to, like, poke fun at his weird political ideas, it's deeply saddening because this is a man who's not well. And rather than encouraging this, people who are the closest to him, like his wife, his loved ones, they should be stepping in and saying, Kanye, let's stop doing this. He's not well. He is not well, he has delusions of grandeur, and the people around him who are letting this continue on, who know better, they're at fault here. I don't even necessarily blame Kanye West, because this is someone who mentally, he needs help. He needs people to help put him in check, right? Keep him uh, grounded in reality, but we're not, we're not getting that. And, you know, until that happens, we still have to call this out. 
We can't allow him to propagate these types of conspiracy theories and spread misinformation about vaccines, uh, say that the solution to COVID-19 is just prayer. This is absolutely nuts. It's unacceptable. And I say this as a fan of Kanye West, a former fan, I should say. I grew up on his music. Like, I was listening to him since the college dropout, bought every single album. Uh, so, I mean, if you're going to get involved in politics and start, you know, spreading this totalitarian message of theocracy and prayer in schools and anti-vax bullshit, it's unacceptable and we have to call you out because you can't be spreading this misinformation. You just can't. So, um, he's not well. Um, you know, if you're laughing at him instinctively, I understand because what he's saying is nonsensical. But at the end of the day, you know, this is problematic for a number of reasons. Not just that I think it's because he's unwell, but because Americans would actually fall for something like this after donald trump maybe this is the next you know cult of personality that republicans and evangelicals flock to so i don't know but i do know that uh i don't like what i see from kanye west with regard to what little policies we know thus far it's deeply deeply troubling to say the least Tremendous, 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 tremendous